Larry Walther. This is chapter 21 on budgeting. And in this final module, we will consider budgetary periods and potential budget adjustments. First of all, in the illustrations we've looked at in this chapter thus far, we sort of assumed an annual reporting period. We had broken the budgets down by quarters, but the master budget covered a period of one year. Budgets typically relate to a year or a natural business cycle but they can be further divided into monthly or quarterly components. We did quarterly components in our budget. Some of the cost in a monthly or quarterly budget is merely a proportional amount of the annual total. However, some costs are not uniform. For example, an office building would probably have a higher fuel cost in the winter due to heating, for example, or if it's in a tropical area, it may have higher cost in the summer due to cooling costs. Anyway, one needs to take those factors into account in planning the budget. Every cost is not merely a proportional cost. Also, uh, we would want to take into account the need for major capital expenditures or capital budgets. In the final chapter in the book, we looked at some capital budgeting considerations and the decision-making process that drives the need for and the determination of the viability of a capital expenditure. But clearly, in planning our cash and financing needs, we need to interface those capital needs or capital expenditure plans. Some budgets are continuous in nature. In other words, as one month or one quarter ends, an additional month or quarter is added, so you always have uh, insight uh, into the upcoming quarter or year or even multi-year period. So it's a rolling or continuous process. This allows for better insight and reaction time to adapt to changing conditions. Some budgets are static in nature. The budget we looked at and in this chapter was a static budget. The amounts were fixed. We didn't anticipate changes or departures from anticipated volume levels. We just assumed what we knew sales would be, for example. However, a flexible budget is one that anticipates volume changes. Recognize, for example, if a business exceeds its sales goals, it's reasonable to expect that certain costs would also exceed plan levels, such as commissions, cost of sales, shipping expenses, and so on that are directly related to volume. In a follow-up chapter, we're going to look at an example of a flexible budget, and in that flexible budget, we're going to see how we have different budgeted amounts that are a function of the level of sales or activity for the period. It's not always static as we've shown in this particular chapter. With a flexible budget, when sales rise, so do certain budgeted costs and vice versa. There's another term that sometimes is used, and I want you to be familiar with the term of encumbrance. It's particularly present in governmental organizations. An encumbrance is a budgetary restriction that occurs in advance of a related expenditure. It purportedly earmarks funds for designated future purposes. So let's think about an example. Assume an operating department has been given a $100,000 budget for office supplies for the year. All right. Now, concurrent with that, the department may have contracted into a $500 per month service contract for their copy machine. That amount is committed or encumbered for the upcoming year. If it's a one-year contract at $500 a month, then $6,000 of the available $100,000 is encumbered already. We know it's going to be spent in the future. It's not available for other purposes. That would leave then our unencumbered or free balance in the budget of only $94,000. So earmark expenditures are certain to occur in the future or are said to be encumbrances and something we need to take into account in planning our budgetary process. We couldn't, for example, breach that contract and so we need to know that that's no longer an issue for which we can simply do away with the expense. It's committed or encumbered.